should the Premier step down? Well, good afternoon and good afternoon to all of your viewers right around Australia. Yes, of course the Premier of Victoria, Victoria Daniel Andrews, should step down. Of course he should resign because it was the negligence of his government systemically across multiple agencies and departments that have caused the deaths of 801 Victorians, caused 200,000 Victorians to lose their job, caused a mental health crisis whilst the state was locked down for four months. This entire crisis was totally avoidable. It hasn't occurred in any other state or territory and it only occurred in Victoria because the Andrews Labor government decided to use untrained private security guards instead of the police and the ADF that allowed the virus to get back out into the community and it killed 801 fellow citizens. And yet the Premier won't take responsibility. In fact, this whole Cote report essentially says that everyone is responsible but no one individual is responsible. Well, I could have said that that was going to be what the report said some months ago. This, this report has been a sham. It's been a farce. Frankly, I just think it's been a waste of time and money. But we all know that the buck stops with the Premier, that everything that occurs in his government is run past his office. And yet Jennifer Coate didn't cross-examine his Chief of Staff, Lissy Gradcliffe. Daniel Andrews, frankly, has blood on his hands. So does his ministers. So does his senior bureaucrats. And frankly, if this was a private business, if this was a private business, well, the management of that private business that resulted in the deaths of 800 people would be currently being investigated by work cover and would probably be prosecuted for what they've done to the people of Victoria. The Premier has apologised this afternoon. He said for the very clear er errors the government uh, has made and the government does plan to put all recommendations in place. Uh, g given what we know, given the year that we've endured, particularly Victorians, we are four days out from Christmas. Is that enough for the Victorian public? No, because he actually hasn't taken responsibility. He's uh, essentially apologised in its broader sense for the total mayhem that his, his government caused this year. But he hasn't actually personally taken responsibility for the decision to use private security that caused such death and destruction. So the Premier has used, once again, weasel words and glib responses. He hasn't taken personal responsibility. In fact, no one in his government has taken personal responsibility for the greatest public administration failure in our nation's history that has cost 801 people their lives. And I think that's absolutely deplorable that the Victorian people still don't know who made this decision. If Daniel Andrews was the CEO of a private company whose decisions, whose acts or omissions caused the deaths of 800 people, well, he'd be prosecuted. And currently in Victoria, WorkSafe are investigating 24 breaches of occupational health and safety laws in Victoria relating to the hotel quarantine fiasco. And I'll be very interested to see whether or not there are any prosecutions under occupational health and safety law here in Victoria because of the hotel quarantine program fiasco. We, we look at the wording in this. Um, the decision to use private security was an orphan, which no single individual agency has taken responsibility for. That wording alone to me is quite, quite, quite something. What did you make of it? Yeah, it's quite incredible language. And it just shows you that the Coat Report was set up to fail from the very outset. That because it wasn't a Royal Commission, uh, former Judge Coate didn't have the powers to really get to the nub, really get to the bottom of who made this shocking decision to use untrained private security. And as a consequence, every agency head, every minister that was called before this inquiry, ducked for cover, blamed someone else. And Daniel Andrews did just that today at his press conference. He threw Jenny McCarkos, the former health minister, and Kim Peake, the former Secretary of the Department of Health, under a bus. He blamed them. He said it was their fault. Well, that isn't good enough because Jenny McCarkos has a very different recollection of events. Uh, she says that she wasn't responsible for the hotel quarantine program. And I think Jenny McCarkos, to clear her name and to set the record straight, needs to come out 
and say exactly who did make that decision because I suspect, and in fact most people believe, that it was made in the Premier's private office, either by the Premier himself or by his Chief of Staff. And indeed, Chris Eccles, the former Secretary of the Department of Premier, resigned for misleading the Code Inquiry because he clearly knew more about who made this faithful decision than he was letting on. The Premier says the program had to be put together quickly, a matter of 36 hours, literally from where to go. Can you appreciate that, given the circumstances and given the time that the government was in, that it was a quick process? Yes, of course it was. But it was a very quick process in every other state as well. And I might observe that New South Wales has still has been taking the lion's share of the nation's uh, overseas arrivals from the 27th of March. So, uh, yes, there's been a, an outbreak in New South Wales in, in recent days, but since March, New South Wales has taken the vast majority of overseas arrivals. They had to put this program to together just as quickly as Victoria, yet 801 people haven't died in New South Wales. 200,000 people didn't lose their job in New South Wales. Why? Because not only did New South Wales use their police force and the ADF to manage hotel quarantine... They had some of the best contact traces in the world. So every time there was a drama with hotel quarantine in New South Wales, they managed to get on top of it. And I've got great confidence that Gladys Berejiklian and her government will get on top of the, the latest outbreak at Avalon. I certainly hope you're right, Tim Smith. Thank you very much for your time. We certainly appreciate it. Wishing you and your loved ones a very merry and safe Christmas. Thank you so much and all the best to your family as well.